Hey, Chuck, thanks so much for coming on the program tonight, sir. Great talking to you again. Good talking to you, Cam. And uh, got an update on a case that we have discussed uh, before here, a challenge to San Francisco's gun control laws. What's going on? Uh, well, we finally got to the point where we can make we can uh, file some substantive motions to try and resolve this case on its merits. This was the case was filed back in in uh, May of 2009, before the McDonald decision even came down. It was one of several cases filed against San Francisco, which we thought might be a vehicle to resolve the standard of review or the incorporation question. Uh, but the city has managed to first it was stayed while mcdonald was heard and since then the city has managed to file a number of obstructionist motions that we've prevailed on all of finally um and now so so now we file the motion for judgment on the pleadings to uh, to resolve the issues which are whether or not the city's ordinance that bans the sale of non-sporting ammunition ammunition and self-defense is not about sport and that uh uh, it requires a gun in the home to be locked up, making it use, useless for immediate self-defense, are violations of the Second Amendment. So the city is trying to make this a huge discovery battle, which is uh, – and trying to make make uh, motions to try and get a lot of factual uh, uh, issues into dispute, which we don't think have any business in this lawsuit. So we're hoping to shortcut the whole thing by with this motion or at least – this motion will be a vehicle to sort of define the issues and get the court focusing on where things need to go so as the city continues to try and delay and file all these uh, efforts to try and make issues out of factual issues that that uh, are irrelevant, we can we can get the court to help stop them from doing that. Okay. Now, uh, Chuck, just out of curiosity, one of the issues that uh, you discussed here was the, uh, the locked storage law. Uh, D.C. had a, a law uh, which was challenged under Heller, uh, that, uh, you know, you had to have your firearm locked up, the uh, ammunition stored separately, basically uh, inaccessible for use in self-defense. And that ordinance was struck down uh, in, in Heller. How on earth can San Francisco even claim that uh, this ordinance is constitutional? Well, that's a good question, and that's one of the reasons that this ordinance made a very attractive test case for us. Uh, the other ordinance was uh, a complete ban on the discharge of firearms in the city with no exception for self-defense. Uh, so between those two, uh, it seemed a, a, a very ripe uh, situation to challenge, and it's very similar to the Heller case, which is why we don't think there needs to be uh, much, if any, factual discovery done in this case, and we, re we really just need to cut to the chase. But when, when uh, Heller came down, this case and another challenge to the San Francisco Housing Authority's ban on firearms in residential public housing units uh, were both uh, very clean-cut, you know, narrow-issues-type cases that that, that uh, would make great case, test cases because of their similarity to issues that have already been resolved. So we'll see what happens in the Nordyke case. That case may or may not address any of the issues relating to standard of review that we had hoped would be addressed. But now this vehicle, if not some of the cases that are already up in the Ninth Circuit, this case, if not some of the cases that are already up in the Ninth Circuit, could provide a vehicle for the federal court to deal with the standard review issue again. Okay. Uh, and so w w what's the uh, the timing on this current case challenging uh, San Francisco's gun laws, Chuck? Our, our hearing on this motion is in the middle of July. Uh, so now we'll be waiting to, to get the city's opposition, and then we'll file a reply brief. And I got to point out, it's very rare that you would actually, that a plaintiff would win a motion for a judgment on the pleading. Now, this is an unusual case, so we think it's appropriate. But even if it doesn't, even if we don't flat out win, I think we're going to get a lot of guidance from the court uh, on where the case should go and how it should be litigated from that point on. The, the court will give us some help, I'm hoping, in, in framing the issues the way we want them framed rather than trying to create artificial issues the way the city wants to frame the, the case. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, listen, Chuck, thanks again for uh, coming on the program tonight, sir. Have a great weekend, and uh, look forward to doing this again soon. My pleasure, Cam. Have a good weekend. You too, sir. Chuck Michelle, California civil rights attorney, joining us here on Cam & Company.